All right, all right, everybody. Welcome back to English Vocabulary and Pronunciation. New videos every week to keep you sharp on your English speaking skills. Today we are doing slang. Slang is so important. And I can tell you that most people, when they're learning English or improving their English, they forget about slang. They learn vocabulary. They learn pronunciation. They learn grammar and sentence structure, verb tenses, and everything else. But you forget about slang. And unless you know slang and idioms and expressions, you kind of don't know what you're listening to. So you have to learn everything. And that's a big part of it. And if you go to school, they don't teach slang usually. They just teach vocabulary and grammar. So in order for you to be able to communicate more clearly and effectively and most importantly to understand what other people are saying if you're watching tv watching a movie uh reading a story reading a book there's a lot of slang there's expressions and there's idioms that we use in normal everyday english as a native speaker that you don't really learn when you're being taught english as a second language so it's important to catch up and uh, get more familiar with the kind of phrases and, and, uh, and expressions that we use to communicate, to say what we're feeling, to say what we mean, to transfer our message to the person or the people that we're talking to. Anyway, this is about slang. In case you were wondering, I'm glad you're here. You're here for a reason, that's to improve your English skills. So subscribe to the channel. I do videos a few times a week. And you can also like the video if you find it useful, share it with other people. So I'm glad you're here. Let's get started into our slang lesson today. The first word is crash. Crash usually means a big accident, like two cars hit each other and they crash or a plane goes down and it crashes. But when I say you can crash on my sofa, you can crash on my sofa. What does that mean? It means you can fall asleep. So if I say I'm so tired, I want to crash. I got to crash. It means I'm really sleepy. I'm very tired. I want to go to bed. I have to crash. So we use this term as slang for sleeping. I also put a second term in here because I realized that we use crash in a different way also. And that means to show up someplace, to arrive. Show up means arrive. Arrive someplace without being invited. So for example, if somebody is having a wedding and you happen to be walking by and you say, oh, there's free food. Maybe we can crash the wedding. It means to go someplace uninvited. So two ways to, to talk about crash. Crash means I'm really tired. I got a crash on your couch. Second is let's crash this wedding. It looks like it's pretty fun. It might be free food and we can listen to the music. So that's crash. Okay, let's keep going. Second one is piece of cake, piece of cake. We all love cake. Most of us love cake and pie and sweet things. But if I say something is a piece of cake, I mean, it's really easy. It's very simple. It's something that is easy or effortless. So for example, English for me, because I'm a native speaker is a piece of cake. Chinese, however, is very difficult. Chinese is, Chinese is a bitch really difficult. That's other slang. We'll talk about that later. But if I say it's a piece of cake, it means so easy. So easy. Number three, third one. Bail. Bail. Bail means to leave. I got to go. I can't stay. I don't want to be here anymore. I got to bail. So my sentence here says, please don't bail on me. I need your help. I need your help. Don't bail. It means don't go away. Don't leave. So that's bail. 
Next one. Uptight. Uptight. Somebody who is very serious and they're not very relaxed and they're always uh, in a bad mood. They're very uptight. So the opposite of relaxed is uptight. My boss is so uptight. My boss is so uptight. So you might tell your friends if they're not having a good time, they're not having fun doing what you're doing, you might say, don't be so uptight, relax. Next one is creep. Creep is a weird or strange person, usually a guy. Creep. Did that creep follow you home? Creep. Who's that creep standing next to my friend over there? So creep is a person. Creep is a weird, strange person. Creep. If I am, if I'm feeling blue, we associate different colors with mood. Blue means I'm sad, I'm depressed. Um, if you're green, means you're envious. If you're yellow, you're en uh, if you're yellow, you're afraid. If you're red, you're angry. Anyway, we'll go back to different adjectives for colors at another time, but feeling blue means you don't feel good, you're sad, you're depressed. I feel blue when the vacation, I felt blue when the vacation ended. Next one is cram. Cram is usually for if you're in school and you don't, you have a lot of time to prepare for an exam and you don't spend that time preparing, you're having fun, you're just enjoying life and doing things that are social, you're not studying, you're not focused. And then at the last minute, you have one day before you have to take the test, you have to cram. It means you have to study a lot in a short amount of time. The sentence here is, I crammed for the exam all night. So if you cram, you study a lot in a short period of time. Next one is cold shoulder. Cold shoulder, if you don't like somebody, but you have to kind of be in the same room with them or area, doesn't mean that you have to be friendly or interact. You can just be, hey, how are you? Nice to see you. And you're not really friendly. So that's called giving them the cold shoulder. It's like ignoring somebody. Gave my girlfriend the cold shoulder. Saw her at a party and I didn't want to talk to her. She wanted to talk to me and I said, hey, it's cold shoulder. It's being unfriendly, being distant. Go Dutch. Go Dutch. Sometimes when you go on a date, it depends on the situation, but if you go on a normal date, usually a guy pays for everybody, he pays for himself and his date. So he pays for both people. But it's if it's kind of like an informal date or if it's friends, we in, you pay for yourself and I pay for myself, that's called going Dutch. We go Dutch. So we went Dutch on our date. Dutch. Give me a ring. You should give me a ring sometime. Call me. So give a ring means give me a call. Give me a call. I'll talk to you later. So that's called give a ring because the old phones used to make a ringing sound like a bell. And now the phrase is call me, give me a ring. I like this one. Next one is sweet. Sweet, we usually think of when we're talking about candy or dessert, pastries, th things like that. Those are sweet. But if there's something that I'm excited about, I really like, I want to say, oh my God, that was awesome. Ah, sweet. So something that is very good or nice. So for example, I just bought a car. I bought a sweet new car. Or I got a free trip to Thailand. Sweet. Sweet. It means awesome. That's really cool. Sweet. Next one is couch potato. Couch potato is somebody who's lazy, who sits on the couch. Some people don't know what couch is. Couch is sofa. Sofa, couch, same thing. So 
so but basically if you stay home and you just watch tv play games read do whatever and you don't go out if you don't go out you're a couch potato i don't know why it's potato but that's just how the expression is so don't be a couch potato go exercise go hiking go shopping go see a movie go outside and do something don't be a couch potato next one is lighten up lighten up it means you're being too serious relax it's not a big deal lighten up you need to lighten up so if somebody gets upset over something that's not very important you can say it's no big deal lighten up lighten up it means relax settle down take it easy take it easy knock so when you knock something it means you're saying something bad about whatever it is don't knock like if I got, uh, if I like, let's see, what can I use an as an example? Some people like Star Wars and some people hate Star Wars. So, you know, I don't love Star Wars. I don't hate Star Wars, but I think a lot of people like it. So I'm not going to knock it. I won't knock it. It means I'm not gonna say anything negative or bad about it. So, you know, if I like to play chess, and you hate chess and you think it's silly. Don't knock me for playing chess. I just like it. Okay, so that's knock. Down to earth. Down to earth. Like uh, somebody's very rich or very famous. But they act normal. They go to McDonald's and they talk to people and they're friendly. And you think because they're rich or they're famous that they would be like somebody that you couldn't have a conversation with or engage with, but they turn out to be very nice. And you say, wow, that guy's really down to earth, down to earth. So my sentence here is he's rich, but still very down to earth. It means he's normal, even though you think that in their situation, they maybe might not be normal. Trash, trash is usually garbage. After you eat something or drink something, you throw it in the garbage, that's trash. But trash can also be a verb. Trash means to destroy something. So if I say um, I was at this party and all these guys trashed the house. Oh my God, they trashed the house. It means they destroyed everything. They destroyed everything. So the accident trashed the car. So trash is not just garbage. It is actually a verb that means destroy something. Next one, jack up. Jack up is a sudden price increase. Hotels jack up their prices in the summertime. It means raise their prices. Jack up means raise the prices. So when it rains, if you walk down the street, all the shops are selling umbrellas, but the umbrellas are twice the normal price. They jacked up the price. So they jacked up means raise a price. Next one, hang out, hang out, hang out. Let's casually get together, socialize with people. Hey. I'm going to be in your neighborhood on Saturday. Let's hang out. It means let's get together. Let's go do something. Let's see each other. Let's, you know, have uh, some activities or um, my sentence says the staff likes to hang out after work. So hang out means just get together, get together, talk, socialize, do things, enjoy company. Next one is a buck. In American English, a buck is a dollar. And I think in British it's quid, but American we say a buck. So instead of saying $5, we usually say five bucks. So a burger costs about five bucks. So a buck is the same as $1. So if I say it cost me a thousand bucks to fly to New York, that means it cost me a thousand dollars. So bucks means dollars in American money. Wrap something up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. It means finish. You got to finish. You're done. Wrap it up. The detective, the detective wrapped up his investigation. It means finish, completed. So to complete something. 
So at the end of the day, we wrap up our work and we go home. It doesn't mean wrap up like you wrap up a sandwich. It just it's a it's a term that means let's just finish what we're doing and then move on to the to the next part of the day. Wrap it up. Drive up the wall. You drive me up a wall. Oh my god. If somebody drives me up a wall, it means they're ir- they're very irritating. Um, they're not, uh, they drive me, I say drive me crazy. So drive me crazy, drive me insane, drive me up a wall. It just means, ah, uh, I get so annoyed when, uh, when you're doing what you're doing or when, uh, it could be not just people, it could be a situation, traffic jams. When there's too much traffic and I'm in a hurry, it drives me up a wall. I always have to wait. I'm in the subway station and there's a million people and nobody is paying attention. It drives me up a wall. It just means, ah, oh, I get crazy. It irritates me. I hate it. Tight. Tight. A lot of different ways that we can use the word tight, but the one, I'm going to just tell you the one way here. So we'll talk about other ones on other videos. But tight uh, means close. It's like if you, so, so tight, like uh, my shirt is... My shirt is too tight, but that's not that kind of a tight. If I say, I've got a friend that I've known for 30 years and we're, we're tight, we're very close. So tight could be like two people or a group of people or um, just, you know, when you talk about people who have an emotional or closeness or a bond, you say, yeah, we're really tight. We, you know, we communicate well, we like each other, we enjoy each other, we spend a lot of time together. Um, we're very tight. Sometimes we say tight knit. Let me write this down. I'm going to show you tight knit. I haven't written anything on this. So maybe tight knit also is uh, a, a good way to say tight. Screw up. Screw up. Oh my God. I was supposed to. I was supposed to pick up my friend at 10 o'clock in the morning and I thought it was 10 o'clock at night and my friend was waiting for me at the airport so I totally screwed up so when you screw up you make a mistake so we say mess up I messed up I screwed up screwed up is a little more strong so if you, you screw up it means you, I, you make a big mistake I screwed up the customer's order maybe if you go to order food at McDonald's and they give you um, a cheeseburger instead of a fish burger, then they screwed up your order. Pretty easy. Pig out. Pig out. We went to the buffet and we pigged out. So if you're a pig, it means you consume too much. You eat too much. You're a pig. Don't be a pig. Pig also means you're too sloppy. You're messy. Your, your room is disorganized. You don't have any... Uh, things are messy so you can be a pig but in this situation in this example we say you if I'm gonna pig out it means I'm gonna eat a lot of food pig don't be a pig don't eat so much and I think that's it yeah that's it we're done okay so there's about 20 different slang phrases that uh, are useful and they're very common so I'll never tell you anything that's not common everything there's a lot of things that are that you see in books and online and they're they're words and phrases but nobody really says them or uses them and they're not common they're not useful to know definitely not useful for speaking um so i'll only give you information that is useful that uh is is used in everyday life in English on a regular basis each day that you'll hear, you'll recognize, and you'll be able to speak and use on your own. So anyway, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for joining. I'm glad you're here. Um, if you like this video, I, and I hope you do, I hope you find it useful, please uh, hit the like button down below. And also subscribe to the channel because I produce... I maybe make about three, four new videos each week. And I look for different topics about English that, uh, based on my knowledge and, and years and years and years of teaching, I know what my students struggle with and what they, they need help with and what they need to improve. So I'm trying to give you information based on my knowledge of things that I've seen other students where the areas that they need to improve. So 
that's all from me. I'll stop talking now. Sorry. Until next time, it's great to see you. I'm glad you're here. Please come back. Send me a note or a question or a comment if you have any down below. And until next time, see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.